1982, an English band emerged on the scene who became yet another of the growing list of acts with a penchant for Asian culture. The band in question, Huang Chung, later known as Wang Chung, and from their self-titled debut album, the track Tinana. sound. I think I'm hearing uh, some fretless bass in my... sing-along chorus right there. Let's catch up with the lyrics here. Uh, you're sending messages to me, girl. I feel them flashed across the land. It's such that I can disbelieve, girl. And what you feel is in my hand. Kind of reflexive, almost. Like, I'm sensing duplicity between these two. Tinana, tinana ne, girl. Tinana, tinana, nay, and repeats that. I'm gonna have to Google that phrase. I love the way he sings it though. It's just so. It's such an earworm. I, I when I first uh, got into the song, like, like oh, 12 years ago now. I just this was one of those songs I just kept on playing and playing for like weeks on end. It was just so. It, it always like got me going somehow. <laughs> I like the way that he's doing this kind of breathy, kind of lazy, yet kind of seductive tone. percussion. I love the blurriness of that chorus guitar riff. Let's catch up with the lyrics. Um, it's cold outside, I can't breathe, girl. Or I think I cannot breathe, girl. That would fit the cadence better. Without a pain inside my heart. And if I should, and if I ever, and if I should ever leave, girl. That, that would be a hard one to fit into the cadence. Or I would have to hear him sing it again. And even then without a start. Okay, it's cold outside, I can't breathe. Without a pain inside my heart. And if I should ever leave, girl. And even then without a start. And if I should ever leave, girl, and even then without a... St this... Yeah, very reflexive, these, these lines. Um, it's almost like they're, they're taking statements and flipping... He's like taking... He's like making a statement or an observation and then flipping the observation back on itself in the next line or something. Yeah, and then the chorus again. Yeah. So when Oh, 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 
vocals that ha 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 <laughs> okay, okay a bit of a Laurie Anderson <laughs> oh Superman <laughs> okay. oh they're doing the words they're going like te 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 like na 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 <laughs> Chung with uh, Tinana from their 1980 debut album. The track uh, written by uh, Jack Hughes. Um, yeah, which um, I got a which which is yeah yeah he's he's the blonde vocalist guy. I was like thinking which which one was the uh, the blonde guy who sang and and the curly haired brunette who uh, was like always behind him always behind his shoulder. Yeah, um, Nick Feldman, the other. Yeah, Nick. that's Nick Feldman. Um, yeah. And what was the one who later worked with uh, Tony Banks? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the third verse. So I'm sitting by the fireside or on the beach or some hotel and I feel like sitting down and crying. I sing the words I know so well. I guess these are just kind of like fractious or like uh, a collage of vignettes of uh, a wasted romantic, or, of like a romantic weekend that went bust or some, some kind. Um, let's see, I, I looked up the phrase, the phrase finder, what is the meaning of the phrase Tinana as heard in New Orleans music and lyrics? Oh, that's uh, in a song by Professor Longhair. Let's see, the phrase, the answer, the phrase is used as a song refrain in a piece recorded by Wang Chung, a British band that used the name in the early 1980s. Uh, no use for that, that part of the sentence. Apparently, Jack Hughes wrote the lyrics. What the connection is with Cajun music and culture, I don't know, but Clifton Chenier, a Cajun musician, recorded a song, Tinana. To judge from the lyrics that you have quoted, it must mean a little more than just a... Uh, that didn't tell me anything. Uh, let's see. Uh, the uh, wiki uh, page was saying on this album, saying that the fra their original name, Huang Chung, uh, means yellow bell in Mandarin. And I guess it was either Jack Hughes or... It was either Hughes or Feldman that... Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> how many bands, there should almost be kind of like a list of, of, of English bands from the early 1980s, kind of like in and around the, the futurist new wave, art pop, new romantic side of music that were, that had this like penchant for Asian culture, this, this oriental intrigue. Um, I'm thinking, let's see, the band Japan. Um, and then a bit later on, um, who, who emerged in 1978, and in 1982, China Crisis and Wang Chang. And then amid all that, uh, those very overt examples, we also had back in 77, uh, Bebop Deluxe, uh, Bill Nelson, recorded a song called Japan, um, which w w represented their move um, away from guitar, orchestral pomp, and into like futurist new wave with the album Drastic Plastic. Um, we had uh, China Girl, uh, the Iggy Pop David Bowie duet from when they were both in Berlin, um, that that both artists would record. Um, we had um, the Yellow Magic Orchestra, who were like the first Japanese band to emerge to pick up on the UK European electro pop futurist new wave influence. 
uh, we had um, the band Landscape, who would eventually become like a new romantic art pop band with their second album. But their first album, when they were still ja doing jazz funk fusion, they had a song on there called Japan, I believe. I, yeah. And um, God, what else? Um, a lot of them. There was also um, an, an American band called China, except they were more in the AOR vein, um, kind of like a, like Glory Days uh, area. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's a few that are, are escaping. I'm trying to think, did Gary Newman or, or, or John Fox or Ultravox or Human League or OMD, did any of them do? Uh, I think, I've, I think I've, I've, I've named them all top of my head for the time being um anyway let's hear another song from this wang chung album the track china <laughs> Once again, that 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 kind of this time kind of a ringing kind of uh, a chorus tone uh, with a riff kind of reminiscent of uh, David Gilmour circa The Wall. I'm thinking of like like Run Like Hell is is just being evoked ever so slightly. <laughs> And I love that horn too. It's so thick and kind of slightly distorted. It's reminding me of more like seventies sax rock. It's it's bringing it back. <laughs> Oh, that, that that B flat right there is such a compelling key center to be throwing to be uh, landing each each uh, verse uh, each stanza on. Ah, oh, I love that 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 progression right there. How how it was using like flats. Um, to go through the sequence like because it went from um b flat and then it, it it then went to a flat and then lands on g and it, it really makes the g sound really low even though g is a pretty normal chord to be playing and then it goes back to b flat like yeah lots of yeah really liberal use of flats in this The way the nuances of the guitar are just working amid that sax, they're, they're such kind of like a, it's almost like a phantasmagoria of late night city lights going on here. It's... <laughs> I'll just appreciate every last uh, sustained of, of that guitar tone. I'm Actually, the guitar tone now, all of a sudden, it's kind of reminding me a bit of Flock of Seagulls. Like some of those songs on, on, on like the first album, like DNA, the instrumental, or the one that I did a few months ago. Um, yeah, yeah, go check that out. Let's catch up with the lyrics to this one. Uh, this one, a correlate between Jack Hughes and Nick D. Spig, I guess like one of the third wheels um, who didn't didn't make it to the uh, next album. Or wait a minute, no, oh no, 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 that's no, that's Feldman. That's or they, they've all, they've all got different. That's right. They they changed their names for this. They they adopted aliases on this album. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Back to the lyrics here. Um, China, China, on the seashore. China, China, on the dance floor. China, China, I must have seen your face before. Huh. Oh, oh so, okay. Already I'm guessing that this is about a woman that he keeps running into. Um, he, he's made this trip to the Orient, and he keeps seeing this woman. 
in all these different places, and it's kind of bizarre to be running into the same person in such a populated area. Like, um, I've been to, um, I've been to Cairo, and I've been to Khartoum. I've seen them places from my rented room. I've been to Paris, and I've been to Marseille. Oh, that I should I should know that pronunciation. Damn me. Uh, but that was nothing till I got to Cathay. <laughs> oh, this is a, a very original dictionary. I mean, we, we've heard plenty of dictionary or, or a bunch of Atlas pop songs, but this, he's choosing some pretty uh, original places to be highlighting here. I've been to New York and I've been to L.A. Okay, yeah, we've heard those. I've been to uh, Delhi and I've been to Bombay. I've been to Venice and I've been to Rome. But now it's pecking that I think of his home. Okay, maybe he wasn't talking about a woman. Maybe he was just saying that he's... He just kind of sees similarities in all these different places. He's been a China, China on the seashore. And then the same... Oh, China, China on the dance floor. China, China. There's no finer place on earth. China, China. I must have seen your face before. Hmm. That, that part's the mystery. Yeah. sequence of flats going on here. Marimba is giving a great kind of a, like an oriental touch here. the vocals kind of like fall on sort of these like dull notes um, amid and, and are slightly kind of distorted, kind of like put in the back, uh, um, slightly placed behind the instrumentation uh, amid this kind of like trebly melange of sound, like the sustaining kind of echoey chorus licks and, you know, the saxophone and everything. It, it, it's a very, very like, like early 80s sonic mesh and i just love it it just it, it takes me to another time it takes it just takes me into an alternate world these especially as things kind of fade out like this and like every <laughs> that was huang chung aka wang chung with china uh, from the album Wang Chung, released in 1982. And to drive the, um, the Asian theme home even further, there's another song on this album called Chinese Girls. Right back to the um, kind of oriental exotica obsession of uh, new wave, new romantic art pop musicians from the UK at the time. Anyway, uh, Wang, uh, Huang Chung, a band that would ultimately change their name to Wang Chung and, and score quite big on their next album, Point of a Curve, with the... Well, you, you know about that. I don't need to... But anyway, um, I guess uh, this band for a time was also thought to be um, 
the Phantom Trio behind the uh, Blanket of Secrecy album that also came out in 1982, but that was later proven false. Um, they did. Uh, Wang Sheng did have some interaction with that band, but that but Blanket of Secrecy included um, Peter Marsh from Easy Street, a great mid to late 70s English trio. Um, that also included um, Rick, uh, Richard James Burgess, who later uh, became the drummer mastermind behind Landscape and um, the producer for Spandau Ballet and the man who coined the phrase New Romantic. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people kind of interacting that all, all had kind of a hand in shaping the identity of the early 1980s. For more rubies and sapphires from the Huang Chung album, aka Wang Chung, see the directory of albums by English W artists linked in the description below. Yes, I have this album filed under Wang Chung. As a matter of fact, um, I think uh, the album is actually uh, credited to. I, I don't think they they altered the. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 a Wang Chung album. It's 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 with their other albums in the W uh, directory. Yeah, for uh, rubies and sapphires from this album, as well as the ones that followed, a couple of the ones that followed anyway, this um, album having quite a, a high red count, being um, up there among the stronger releases of 1982 in a very competitive year. And uh, I say that having heard uh, about a thousand albums from 1982 at this point. Yeah. Uh, like and subscribe and follow me on social media and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about these two songs, the layers, the guitar tones, the just nuances, the way the sounds collided and coalesced and intermingled with one another, as well as the lyrics, um, observations you might have about uh, what the lyrics may have meant, what certain lines may have been getting at, yeah. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most air travel tramaximist, signing off.